everyone. This is your host Urvashi Chahan. Welcome to Courts Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Let me start by informing you that a Delhi court today denied interim bail to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal in the money laundering case related to the alleged liquor policy scam. Special Judge Kaveri Baveja of Rouse Avenue Courts dismissed Kejriwal's plea seeking interim bail for seven days on medical grounds. Appearing for Kejriwal, senior advocate N. Hariharan had submitted that the medical condition of the chief minister was such that necessitated moving of the application for interim bail. S.G. Tushar Mehta, appearing for ED, had raised preliminary objections and said that the interim bail plea was not maintainable. The additional solicitor general stated that strict requirements for granting bail under Section 45 of PMLA must be followed even when considering an interim bail application. He explained that interim bail cannot be granted unless it is clearly shown that there is no offence. The court dismissed the plea. Kejriwal, who was produced in court from Tihar jail through VC, has been remanded to judicial custody till 19th June. His regular bail plea is scheduled for hearing on 7th June. As you know, Arvind Kejriwal was arrested by ED in March. He was granted interim bail by the Supreme Court till 1st June and surrendered a day thereafter. Also, let me tell you, the Delhi High Court has directed the central government to decide within six weeks on the Aam Aadmi Party's request for temporary accommodation until land is allotted for their permanent office in Delhi. The party must vacate its current office on Rouse Avenue by 15th June. Justice Subramanian Prasad ruled that the party cannot use one of its minister's units on Deen Dayal Upadhyay Marg as a temporary office. However, the court stated that the party is entitled to use a housing unit from the general pool and that the pressure or lack of availability are not valid reasons to reject Aam Aadmi Party's request. Deceptively similar marks or names can significantly impact a brand's reputation and market presence. To safeguard businesses and consumers alike, copyright and trademark laws play a crucial role in protecting intellectual property. These laws ensure that companies can maintain their brand integrity and prevent confusion in the marketplace. In one such case, the Delhi High Court has restrained a Punjab-based food chain named Donato's from using the trademark of Domino's for selling pizzas and burgers. It was Domino's case that it has the exclusive right to use as well as restrain the use of its registered trademarks, including Domino's and Domino's Pizza, in relation to its business. The suit was filed against a Punjab-based entity operating its six outlets under the name Donato's in various regions. Domino's came to know of the use of impugned marks in April after it came across a YouTube video using hashtag Domino's being linked with hashtag Donato's. Justice Anish Dayal passed an ex parte ad interim injunction in favor of Domino's pizza group of companies and directed Donato's to take down all references to its device marks in respect of pizzas and burgers from its domain that is www.donatos.in. The court also ordered various social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, etc. to take down listings of Donato's products. The court said that balance of convenience lies in favor of Domino's and they are likely to suffer irreparable harm in case the injunction is not granted. In another update, the Rajasthan High Court has refused to quash an FIR lodged against two doctors of the Fortress Hospital at Jaipur who are accused in connection with an international racket that came to be busted in respect of alleged illegal transplantation of kidneys. The complaint alleges that administrators and doctors at Fortis Hospital were involved in a fraudulent kidney racket colluding with doctors, recipients and brokers for financial gain. They reportedly bypassed authorization committees and prepared forged NOCs using signatures on blank papers. They were booked under various provisions of the Transplantation of Human Organs and Tissues Act. This act aims to create a transparent, ethical and regulated system for organ and tissue transplantation, enhancing medical outcomes and protecting all parties involved. The accused had filed a plea to quash the FIR, but the court refused. A bench of Justice Sudesh Bansal held that it cannot be said that there was no evidence to connect the petitioners with the alleged racket of illegal kidney transplantation. The Gujarat High Court has halted the admission process for LLB courses at eight law colleges in Gujarat that have not received approval from the Bar Council of India. The court directed the BCI to conduct inspections of these colleges, which is a prerequisite for granting approval. 
Justice Vimal K. Vyas noted that based on 2008 rules and the Supreme Court's judgment in Bar Council of India versus Bonnie Foy Law College, universities or states cannot assign students to unrecognized colleges. Currently, the petitioning colleges lack BCI approval, warranting further consideration of the issues raised. Earlier, a coordinate bench of the High Court had directed the universities to which these eight law colleges are affiliated that the state of Gujarat clarify their stance regarding allotment of students to colleges lacking BCI recognition. The court directed the BCI to complete inspections and report to the respective colleges by 15th June. The next date of hearing is 20th June. Stay tuned. And lastly, an update on the Rajkot Gaming Zone fire where the tragic fire last month killed at least 27 people, including nine children. The fire engulfed the two-story building crowded with about 300 people due to the summer vacation and weekend rush. The Gujarat High Court took so moto cognizance of the incident. At the last hearing, the court had directed the commissioner of the Rajkot Municipal Corporation as well as the officers who held the position from July 2021 until the date of the incident to file affidavits before the court explaining what actions were taken regarding the guidelines in this regard. The court had also sharply criticized the Rajkot municipal body and the government after it was revealed that two gaming zones in Rajkot had been operating for over two years without the necessary permits. Now, the Commissioner of Police Rajkot has filed the affidavit before the High Court explaining the permissions granted to the TRP gaming zone. Let me tell you that Section 33 of the Gujarat Police Act empowers the Commissioner and District Magistrate to regulate traffic and maintain public order, including controlling amusement venues and ticket sales. The Commissioner in the affidavit has explained that in Rajkot Amusement Park, applicants must obtain a booking license to regulate ticket sales, ensuring public safety and preventing disturbances at these venues. He has clarified that Section 33.1.W covers various control aspects, including public safety, obstruction, and the prevention of disturbances at such venues. Regarding permissions granted to TRP Gaming Zone, the affidavit detailed the processes for two entities and that licenses issued to them were not under Section 331W, but were instead related to Section 331X of the Act as specified in the licenses. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.